Hello and welcome to This Is My Architecture. My name is Derek and I'm here today with Dave from OpenFit. Welcome Dave, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, so before we dig into uh, some of the technical uh, components here, uh, can you tell us a little bit about OpenFit? Yeah, of course. OpenFit was launched at the beginning of 2019. It's a digital streaming platform that integrates workouts, nutrition and wellness all in one place. Very cool. And I understand you're doing uh, sort of full stack uh, development um, and uh, you're more or less all in on AWS. That's right, yeah. And we're using a lot of AWS serverless components. Very cool. Very cool. So um, I, I see here you're using code pipeline and we're sort of zoomed in on the continuous deployment aspect of your, of your uh, build. Is that's, that right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, very cool. So could you walk us through a little bit? Uh, I understand this is kind of after the integration tests and unit tests have run. We're really getting into the meat of how the um, uh, build artifacts are created and deployed. Yes, of course. So what are the stages so, here? So before the code pipelines run, there's a PR, a pull request um, submitted mm -hmm. to initiate the code pipeline. Th within that, that, that's where our continuous integration runs. And within that PR, before the PRs run, there's integration tests, unit tests, linting, and, and the code review. Mm -hmm. So the PR initiates that when, when um, it's the code's ready to go to QA and hopefully production. Mm -hmm. Got it. And I see this is uh, kind of simplified a bit more, more than likely, but uh, yeah. essentially you're building, you're deploying uh, an artifact to QA, you have a manual approval step. Uh, and then once that's approved, you finally go to prod. Could you just kind of briefly describe, uh, you know, the different uh, stages here? Yeah, I can. So be before this actually happens, we, we have a Slack channel. Mm -hmm. um, we have a Slack channel for each service, each mm -hmm. of our microservices. Everybody who um, is involved in that process is in that Slack channel. Mm -hmm. um, so when the PR comes through, there's um, a report built um, from that PR, mm -hmm. and it's sent to the Slack channel um, over here. And, and that's just a notification saying, hey, this happened, the build's been created. It's a notification and it's a report with um, commit IDs, mm -hmm. which files have been modifi modified, mm -hmm. and the pull request number. Got it. And then next you're going to do uh, the, the build, and is that using, uh, that's using uh, code build? Yes, exactly. So this is where we um, start building the artifact. Mm -hmm. It's an immutable artifact that we um, save, and then we um, save that to ECR, mm -hmm. and then what happens next is we pull that down from ECR and we deploy it to QA using code, code build. Got it. And is there, uh, what, is there a notification step here with, uh, with Slack? Yeah, throughout the pipeline, we send a notification at every step. Mm -hmm. So when the build artifact is built, we get a, a notification saying it's built, and then the next notification comes through when the QA environment's been built. Got it. Got it. Okay, so you've built the artifact, you've deployed to your QA testing environment, and you've notified the Slack channel. Um, and then, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the proof steps? I think that's where sort of the, some of the chat ops component comes in here. Exactly. So after the QA step, um, th there'll be a message in the um, Slack channel, and the QA team will know it's now time to look at this um, artifact, this mm -hmm. um, deployment. So. Later on, once the QA team's ready for this um, to go to go to production, mm -hmm. they'll notify us in the Slack channel that everything looks good. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, the approve um, function has already sent a Slack message via, via an SNS mm -hmm. to a Lambda to Slack. So, so this is um, an SNS um, provider. It, sends an SNS payload to Lambda. This Lambda uh, uses a webhook into Slack and says, and, and um, delivers a yes, no um, interactive message box. Got it. So the, the build was successful, the deploy build was successful. Uh, it's time to do an approval. You want to pop up a, a yes, no box in the, uh, in the, in the Slack chat. Uh, yeah. And so that's going to go through SNS to Lambda. Um, but I imagine that's asynchronous, right? It could take some amount of time before you get an answer. So what happens after the, the yes, no box pops up? Yeah, definitely. It's, it, it is asynchronous. Um, we load the payload in using this side mm -hmm. of the notification. And then when, when it's ready to go live, the QA team will notify us. And only the DevOps team can actually click this button, and there's permissions around that. Mm -hmm. So that will um, trigger the REST API 
on API Gateway. Mm -hmm. um, execute it in, in um, invoke a Lambda, and then um, tell the code pipeline to continue with um, its flow. And it deploys. Um, then we move on to the next next stage, which is deploy to production. And once again, it pulls the build artifact down and then deploys to production. Got it. Uh, so that's a nice way for you to sort of be able to quickly um, uh, get those deployments out. Uh, how often are you doing this sort of deployment in a given day or a given you know, week? So some days it could be three to four times, and then mm -hmm. other days not, not quite as much. But yeah, we, we can deploy very fast. We, have, um, we, we try and keep our code changes small mm -hmm. um, so we can deploy frequently. Awesome. So uh, can you just talk a little bit about some of the benefits you've seen about adopting this uh, chat ops model? Um, wh why does the team like it so much? Of course, yeah. I mean, w w when we was designing this system, we, we thought about this, this part of the process because traditionally it's held up deployments. You know, you have to have release releases in tickets in JIRA. Maybe everybody has to come into a room, and we definitely didn't want to do that because using the test-driven development, we was able to push the code out very fast because all the tests were happening before it even got to the deployment. Okay. So that, that was the motivation be behind um, the chat ops. OK, well, Dave, thanks you so, thank you so much for coming in and sharing uh, your architecture with us. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.